So there I was, like newlywed, by the way. Um, I had to tell my wife that I wanted to quit my job, um, pay a ton of money for some boot camp that didn't really guarantee that I'll have like another job. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is John and you're watching Soul Encoded. Today, I wanted to talk about my journey to becoming a software engineer. Um, I think I've mentioned bits and pieces of the story uh, throughout my videos before, but I thought maybe I should you know, take some time to sit down, drink some water, um, and kind of recall the events in my life that led me to where I am today. Future John here. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm editing this video and this video is freaking long. So I'm going to annotate kind of like different portions of the video so that you guys don't get bored out of your mind. So just click through the parts that you guys are interested. Okay, bye. Back to the video. This story might be a little bit long, so I might cut it up into uh, multiple parts, but I hope you guys enjoy it anyways. I'm really great today. Like I have this F8 like bottle thing. That's great. I have great pants on. I have this like great. I'm all, I'm all great today. <laughs> uh, signs of getting old, right? I, I think a good starting point would be right after college. Um, I graduated uh, UC Santa Cruz in 2010. Um, I actually had an economics degree and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I, I just went to college because I thought that was the right thing to do. So I went to college not really knowing what, it, what I wanted to do and ended up um, going to economics because I thought I was interested in finance and making money and all these kind of things. So I decided to just go for economics. So. In 2010, I graduated, and if you guys lived through that era, or if you guys are familiar with during that time, basically it was at the cusp of the financial, the housing crisis. So the financial crisis happened in 08, and I graduated in 2010. So the job market was pretty terrible. It was probably like the worst um, since like uh, 1930. Uh, what is it? The Great Depression, because of the housing crisis and all this kind of like financial depression. Uh, during that time it was really difficult to find work like a lot of my friends who had really good grades who you know had like 4.0s or like 3.9 like they were even they were having hard like finding trouble so during that time a lot of people i knew like went back to school they got like a master's degree in something or one of my friends went to like law school but the point is it was actually really hard to find work and i was kind of at loss i was like really shocked and, and I went back to live with my parents' house right after I graduated and I was thinking to myself like man what what am I gonna do like like I can't find any work um, so I started like digging around doing some research online to f see where I could like what kind of skills that I could learn to find work and um, I met this professor who taught at a community college and I talked with him and I asked him like hey like what do you think it's like a good path for me and by the way he was like an accounting uh, professor so he had connections to ENY, KPMG, Ernst & Young, um, Deloitte, like all the big fours like uh, they're basically you know like if you want to be in accounting you go to those big four like big four firms and then you like bust your ass off for like uh, like three four years and then you find a job at some corporate office well, that's like kind of the path for accountants so I was like oh yeah that sounds great because one one key thing that I noticed about accounting is that no matter where you go, what kind of job you uh, company you are, you always need a few accountants. So I figured, you know what, that's like not a bad thing because it's like uh, I don't need previous experience really. I just need good grades to get in, um, and it seemed like the right path. So through those research, I found this program called. Um, CAP, which is a certified accounting, certified advanced accounting program or something. It was it was uh, taught in um, Santa Clara University, which is like a private school. But the um, the school is decent. It, but the the interesting thing was that for eight months, every Saturday you do an eight hour class for eight months. So I did that. So during that time, I I. I was like, okay, I'm gonna apply for this. 
Luckily, I got in. Um, I think the only requirement was that you had a certain amount of a GPA before uh, and you have a bachelor's. I think those were the like two requirements. And um, uh, But yeah, I got in and I started taking the class. And that year of my life was like really hectic, I remember. Because during that time, I have also realized I probably need to start doing like internships of some sort. So I asked around and my dad, I, my dad knew someone who was an accountant in the city and I got an internship there. Uh, it was basically no pay. They just paid for my BART like transit and they gave me, I think $1,000 bonus towards the, like a Christmas bonus uh, for the whole year that I worked there almost, like whole eight, eight months or so, right? So I was taking this like accounting class on Saturdays. I was working pretty much full time, um, getting no pay at this accounting job. Um, they were just making me do like random, random data entry jobs, pretty data entry stuff, pretty much. And um, I was, you know, I was a kid. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Still, I, I was just doing something that made sense to um, make, you know, find a job eventually. And I was also going to Santa Cruz every weekend to see my um, to see my girlfriend, now wife, um, which is kind of crazy if I think about it. That we've been together for almost ten years now. But basically, it, it, I was really busy during that time, and uh, I, I didn't quite like enjoy the entire business of it. But I, I didn't feel like I had any choice, so I, I, you know, stuck to it. I went through the program. I got decent grades, and I had like interviews at KPMG, ENY, and like basically the big four. But I don't know what it was, but I just did really bad on all of the interviews. Um, I, I basically made it to the final round, and then. Like I would, I remember now till the, even till this day in my ENY interview, I did really well on. So basically, they give take you to like different levels of accountants there, so mid range, like a like a junior and all this kind of stuff. And I thought I did really well, except for the very end, they pretty much brought me into a partner, right? Um, so they're like, oh, here's a partner. You get to talk to them. He's gonna ask you a few questions. But I remember even till this day. I was just like, I got really nervous and I started like playing around with like a pen or something like that the whole time. And I think, I, I don't know if it was that, but it, I, I kind of feel like it was my like behavior, uh, um, my professionalism didn't show. So yeah, basically I didn't get those jobs. I was really devastated at the time. I'm like, man, I spent all this time, you know, studying. But um, eventually I was able to find uh, work at the largest Korean uh, like firm in America, which is called um, ZKP. Um, I was able to leverage like the Korean that I knew and uh, my accounting skills and all this yada 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 and it kind of was a good fit at the time. Uh, turns out though, that job for me was pretty much the worst experience ever that I, that, like, I have uh, like witnessed since my like short 20 something years during that time, right? It was a horrible working environment. The boss was, the boss literally threw stuff, like swore, like cussed at us, and like he basically did like a bunch of like terrible things to um, to his employees. Like it was weird. Like um, this one time, I remember vividly. I was like, I need to get the hell out of here. Like this was a moment when um, we were going down. Um, base. Okay, so I wanted to be an audit. Like, right, so they, they put me in like just accounting. Um, so I was doing like small business, small business accounting and like I was helping out with like tax and stuff like that, but I wanted to be in audit. Um, I don't know why, I just figured like, hey, this is like what you're either doing audit or you're doing tax. I don't wanna do tax because, you know, you have to study a lot to do tax uh, because the codes keep changing. But for audit, it's more like, I don't know, I, I still don't really know what I'm talking about in this because I never got got past th this, but my assumption at the time was that if you want, like if you do auditing, you just go to a company and then you have a set of things that you just need to check. And then you check that and then you like do the bookkeeping there and then just making sure that what they say that they have, all the assets that they have, is it meets the like on paper. That's all you do. Um, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of but you get to like go out and mingle and talk to people and you know I, I'm pretty social um, So I, I like that aspect of I, I like that like kind of notion of the job 
So I didn't know how to do any audits or anything. I wasn't trained for it, you know. But basically, he's like, "Hey, come. I'm gonna take you to the, your first audit. So uh, show up early, 6 a.m. You know, get ready to go." And then he told me that like the week before we went. So I was like, "Great, that's awesome." And then he even reminded me like two days before the day of the audit that we we're gonna go. But anyways, um, 6 a.m. shows up, and then he comes into the office, pissed off. For no reason, I don't know why. He's just pissed off, and then we're like, "Man, why is he so pissed off?" So, uh, my other like senior accountant, and we're like, "Why is he so pissed off?" Like it was, it was crazy. I, I had no idea why he was like. Anyways, he all of a sudden comes up to me and says, "Hey, why are you here?" You know, I'm like, "Oh, because it's the audit thing that you said we need to go. Like, I, you told me to be here." And he was like, "Really?" And then, like, for some reason, I think he forgot that he was gonna bring me. But at the same time, like, all of a sudden, he changed his mind. Like, I don't still to this day, I don't know why he was so upset about this. But during the, he he regret like he begrudgingly brought me to like this audit. But during the car ride to the audit, we shared a car. He like just yelled at me and my、uh, coworker. For no reason, for like an hour, I was like, "What is going on?" Like I was just like, like he was like saying all these like terrible things. He's like, "Do you even know anything?" And like blah 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 blah. All, all these things. He was just like, I. He was just going crazy. So I,、uh, I don't know. It was definitely one of those moments where I realized that having a great boss, um, it's it's rare. It, it you know it's not. Like some people might like take it for granted, but having a great boss really matters in your workplace.、Um, but anyways, so I realized at the time, as soon as that day was over, I was like, "Oh my god, I gotta get out of here." So yeah, this job was like really, really terrible. The only saving grace of this moment in my life—well, there's two saving grace. One is obviously. I had a wonderful relationship with my wife,、um, so we were able to, you know, continue that on. She was really awesome. She drove from like San Jose to San Mateo more often than I went to San Mateo to San Jose because I was getting off work at like eight and going in at like seven. So, but、um, one thing that was awesome during this time is、uh, this: I was living with one of my best friends.、Um, he, my friend Andrew. He and I we met in high school, and we've been very close friends to, like all throughout college. Even though we went to different colleges, but we still kept in touch and still hung out. And after when we grad both graduated, we decided to move in together. And this point when I had this accounting job,、um, and he was working in the city,、uh, basically this is when we started living together. And、uh, it was great because this was this was the first time that I was like. Um, out on my own apartment, kind of thing, living with my like best friend, and it, it was a lot of fun. And another cool thing that happened was、um, another friend of mine, another best friend of mine,、uh, who basically I grew up with this guy、um, in elementary school and like high school. His name is Juni. So、um, he he basically left to、uh, Boston for like eight years and betrayed me.、Um, Granted, it was his parents' decision, and then he went to Korea to like、um, teach English for a few years, and then he came. The, his parents moved back to California, and、uh, he, when he came back to America, he came to California, and then we reconnected, and it was like you know, time had like there was nothing that changed between us. We just picked up right where we left off, and it was basically like us just like. We and we all mingled very well. It was it was really fun. So I had my best friends around. I also had my friend, like best friend from college, who was like around the area too. So like the four of us, we were just hanging out all the time. And it, it was that part of living in San Mateo and going to that job、um, that was actually a saving grace. But this was a point where the original like. Uh, idea of like making apps and becoming a software engineer like started. So my friend Juni, he he is a guy of actions. He's like, hey, if we want to do something, let's like think about it, and then we just like do it. So he 
he's a really smart guy and he you know he's like hey let's go let's do it like when he's really into it he just wants to go 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 right um which which is kind of like me too but anyways um it all started from us being like hey let's like do let's like do something right so uh one day he's like hey let's build a computer and we're like okay sure whatever and then he shipped like a cpu to our like front door and then we're like oh shoot i guess we're building a computer and uh i we went out i bought a case for the computer and then um my friend andrew he he had like spare ram lying around and like all these things like all these things we like kind of bought and like jumbled together without really looking at the specs carefully and we made like this computer and this computer became my friend Junie's computer while he was over and hanging out with us so we had this like uh you know the crappy costco foldable chair uh, like desk for him <laughs> and then he had a computer there and it was great and we, we i remember playing like diablo 3 with them and yeah this computer was called gigatron it was like you know looking back it was kind of shit like it was pretty shitty because um we lost a lot of like hardcore like diablo 3 characters from gigatron because it would crash on this while we were playing the game <laughs> but yeah sad 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 days but anyways like um this is kind of when we all started like uh like building things and doing things and doing all this stuff and my one thing i didn't mention is that my friend andrew he is as far as i've known andrew he's been making video games um he is actually a cs grad um but he was during that time he he was working as a quality assurance engineer at macy's.com for like I think like three four years during that that was like his fourth year or something because he started there as an intern uh, anyways he was while he was doing that he was actually still working on uh, his game and it was, it was kind of crazy like um, we all shared this kind of passion for games so we decided one day hey you know what let's like make apps I was like hey guys like let's just try to figure out how to make an app you know and um, Junie being like the genius that he is, um, and this guy has like a huge head. But anyways, he this guy's really smart. So he's like, oh yeah, let's do it. And he, he and my other friend Andrew, who is also really smart too, um, they both just went out to Barnes and Nobles and grabbed an Android book for LibGDX, um, which is like a framework that makes video games. So they started like just going through the tutorials. And I was like, oh great, Like, I want to contribute to this, but um, I don't really want to learn how to program. Um, the main reason at the time, I think it's because I, I didn't have a lot of like success in school. I've always, I, I think I had like a slight ADD kind of issue where I couldn't concentrate in certain subjects. Um, I had to be really like creatively endowed, I guess. I, I, basically, I didn't really put my attention or um, my 100% into any like school work before so, but with that comes like a lack of confidence and like oh i don't think i can learn this kind of stuff right and i tried too i remember taking a class in c because you know growing up i loved computers and video games so i always wanted to learn how to make video games um so i tried taking a c class and i did really bad on that so i always thought like yeah programming is probably not for me and which is funny to think now because i love it so much but you know life is funny that way but anyways so these guys started like making apps with like they started doing the programming side and i was like you know what I, I think the best way for me to contribute is by doing the assets you know like making um characters move around and all that kind of stuff so i uh, my wife um girlfriend at the time like she bought me a wacom tablet and it's it's one of those like uh like surface things where you draw on the surface and you can see it it's actually really good technology like even till this day i prefer that than most of like the on-screen like um drawing technologies it just feels a lot better but anyways i started learning how to use photoshop and like some of the early work that i did is really really terrible i because i you know i didn't have any like art background or anything i just figured like hey like i'm I'm like kind of artistic maybe <laughs> so I started drawing and I, I even remember like the first like work that I did it was I didn't know how to actually draw so I used like the circles and squares to make my shapes and then um, another thing about Photoshop is that if you do like alt Z and then alt Z again 
it actually just reverse and undoes and reverts and undoes so you have to hold like control or i mean you have to like hold alt as well if you want to keep undoing i didn't know that so like i was really careful to draw one line and then wait and check and then do like alt z um if i messed up and then try again so I, like all these little things i just didn't know about <laughs> like making art um but yeah, I, I kept at it. It's crazy if you think about it, but we really uh, were passionate about it and we just did it for fun. And we ended up making a few apps, um, some of which never saw the light of day. Like we had an app where like, they're all games basically. But um, the first game that we actually published to the app store, um, like Play Store, Google Play Store, because it was an Android app. Uh, it was it was called How. It's not on there anymore. Um, ever since like the whole data privacy thing, but it's basically a small character that went through like a maze, and my friend uh, created like a roguelike maze, and he did some like really interesting like light algorithm thing, where like the light like it was it was really interesting that he was able to do this at such a like if I think about it now, I'm like, wow, that's like actually really, um, that's actually a pretty like hard program to write. Like you need to do pathfinding. So you probably did some kind of like A star or, you know, some, some kind of like min, minimum spanning tree kind of problem. But he was able to do all of this. So like, I, I don't, re I didn't realize it at the time, but it's actually a really tough problem. Um, but basically it, you had a character that went from one level to the next and we had like zombies and like um, ghosts and all these like pumpkins that exploded that just chased after him. And um, I did all the sound effects for it. It was fun because we, we literally spent one day on that project and my friend Andrew, he was supposed to contribute a lot to it and he did like the text for it, the text um, like the small texting text box there but i remember him he we, he he was really into this phase where he was eating a lot of wendy's <laughs> and he got really sick eating that wendy's and he was like throwing up and <laughs> like projectile vomit and all this kind of like diarrhea stuff and he even clogged my toilet over there <laughs> during this time i remember remember so he was like kind of out of commission during this whole time junior and i were making uh, the game but yeah, so I did all the art for it, and um, I did all the sounds for it, and Junie did most of the programming for this game, and we released it. And it was, it was an awesome feeling, like just like the whole process of it, like physically, like you know, people say that making like apps is not really, um, it's not really one of those things where it's visceral. But I could say from my experience. It can be very visceral. Like, uh, I don't know. It's it's there's definitely a phys physical aspect of it, um, and there's like a stamina component to it, and um, the thrill that you get from hitting that submit button to launch your app, and then in turn seeing that app getting downloaded from the app store to your own device without having to connect anything, but through their Play Store, or you know. Yeah, basically the Play Store. It's it's definitely something else. At least for me, like I I remember it was during the that like kind of moment. I'm like, man, making apps is like super fun, and I was like hooked. I was like really hooked. Um, so during that experience, I realized I really wanted to make apps. Like it's it was the most fun thing that I've done in a while. But the craziest thing is, uh, my friend Juni also felt very similar um, but he was like really into programming like he was basically doing like non-stop coding like 8 10 12 hours a day for the whole year that we were there um, or, or like six months or so that he was studying but you know he was studying to go to grad school because he wanted to continue teaching so he was he like the first like six months he started like study for his GREs and after he took it he just while he was waiting for the results, all he did was study like programming so that he could make these apps with us. And um, I think during that time, he kind of really fell in love with the craft. And um, he started looking around for like internships for programming. And we had a family friend who worked at a, a game company. Um, 
in San Francisco, and he applied uh, through this. He got a referral, um, and he got. And he basically went in saying he wanted like an internship and all. This, he just wanted to program, and then surprisingly, he got a job. Like I was actually really surprised. I was like, of course, I was rooting for my friend, but at the same time, I was like, man, that's like. You know, CS like it, it'd be crazy if he actually got the job. You know, in my head, I'm like, is that even possible? Um, but he had built、uh, a few portfolio pieces using like one of which was this game, and he was working on some other stuff too. He also had really good grades, and he was just like a smart guy in general. So he had like the academic background for it all, all taken care of. But yeah, it was like I I, I think he did well in the interview. And he got the job, and I was like, "Whoa, this is mind blowing!" Like, I can't believe that like someone who like I I know someone who is in like the software engineering de- like industry without having a CS degree. Like this whole concept, that whole concept of like not having a degree and having a job that's like usually you, you need a degree to get to. Like that concept, like he broke for me. And I was like, "Wow, that's crazy!" So I didn't realize it at the time, but that had a huge factor later on when I was like, "Should I do this?" You know, like, because like when you contemplate like a career change, it's not easy. You know, people say, "Ah,、eh, just quit your job, do whatever." Like, no, it's it's really hard to quit your job. Like, no matter what it is, like,、um, everyone's a little have different ranges of risk averseness, and mine's like. I'm pretty risky in some things, but I'm pretty risk averse too. But yeah, this like whole concept he like shifted for me, and、uh, yeah, it, it was really crazy. So he ended up taking that job, moving. He went to the city, and as I mentioned earlier in the story, I hated my job at the time. So I I did whatever I can, and luckily my sister at the time and、uh, was working at a company. In San Jose, it was like a contract manufacturing firm.、Um, my my dad also knew the CEO because my dad's an electrical engineer and he's kind of connected in Silicon Valley. So he they were able to hook me up with like a, like a just like an entry like product management job basically.、Um, it's it, the title was PM, which is like program manager.、Um, usually program managers like they manage. Projects and stuff like that, a program, but、uh, in in all intents and purposes, like the job was account management.、Um, so I started like learning about hardware. It was it was a fun job for a few years, and I learned a lot about hardware.、Uh, I learned about a lot about processes and quality control and all these kind of stuff. And you know, it, it was kind of int- it was a pretty cool job, and the people were fun. Uh, I met a lot of good pe- people there. My boss was great. I learned a ton from him, and I really developed my social skills at work here because,、uh, yeah, it was it was a crazy environment too. But you know, there was there was a lot of interesting things that happened in that company too. But that's for another time. So during this time, my friend、um, Andrew. Uh, he also found a software job, and you know he was a CS student, but he was also he also like used that skill that he learned making live GDX games and made his own like side project with it, using that, and then all of like his background of making games this whole time, he finally found like his dream job working at a startup,、um, like writing code every day, right, like an Android developer. So he started work around the same time too as an engineer. So my two friends、um, was going、uh, like. We're both in the city, and they're like being an engineer, right? And and I remember like, oh man, that's like so cool! Like they get to like work on apps full time, and I was always I was really jealous at that time about that fact.、Um, at, even at that time, I still didn't like want to be an engineer. Like I had no like motivation for that、um, because I wasn't really coding, or I didn't have aspirations to do that.、Um, nor did I think that like I wanted to do that. So basically, during this time, I wasn't able to make any apps, right? Because I only knew how to draw,、uh, like draw, and they were in the city. So, you know, we would meet every now and then, and like one day we would meet, and we also like we would make a game and then try to like release it. But 
you know it's really hard when um you're trying to do all these things in like one go uh and when everyone and especially they're probably programming for a living so it's a little different working on side projects when you're programming you know the whole day and then you have to like program on your weekend it's it can be draining right and, but for me i'm like hey you know, whatever i don't I'm, I'm, this is like for me for, like for fun it's not my job yet so i was like come on guys like just like you know code for code for me for free you know like <laughs> i was just like come on let's 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 make apps and let's like make money online um <laughs> Uh, looking back, it's, it's super interesting. So during this time that I was in San Jose, I continue like following uh, my cur current, my passion at that time, which was like drawing, right? I started a web comic series. Uh, I did that for an entire year, uh, where I released like one comic every week. Um, I, it's I still have it. It's called Omni Comics. I think I hosted on blog posts. You guys could read some of the comics. It's like. It's pretty dated now. There's some jokes in there that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but I, I'm, I mean, I'm still pretty proud of like that work that I put in, and um, I even tried doing like uh, super embarrassing, but I even tried doing like a YouTube like music thing because I was into music and making music and stuff like that too, um, and I, you know, I really like singing and all this kind of stuff and. But yeah, like, yeah, it's, you guys could probably like find it somewhere. It's kind of embarrassing, but I did that. Um, but yeah, I had all these art skills. So I was like, you know what? Like, let me make like a shirt business. So I even have like a heat press downstairs where I like, um, like try to sell like my designs. And there's a website called Threadless, um, and I have a bunch of designs upstairs, like up there that no one like bought. <laughs> But yeah, I, I was always doing stuff and um, one thing that was weird was that I kept going back to wanting to build apps. So every like now and then I would message my friends I would be like, hey dude, like come on man, let's let's like hang out again and like let's dev, dev the day, you know, like come on, I'll buy you some beer, let's go, you know. So, you know, we'll do this and that and man, it was it was getting a little frustrating for me because like these guys, you know, they're they're engineers, so they're they don't want to like whenever they came over, they were like, oh yeah, let's code a little bit, but they didn't have that same like drive as me in in the sense that I like for me, uh, I wanted to like get my I wanted for me to get my art to be seen, I needed these guys to code, but for them, their their code whether it sits here. Um, they're already doing code like they're already writing code for work so you know it's, it was different you know it's, it's, it's like if like right now if someone asked me oh you want to like program something you want to like make an app together I need to, like let's do like a thing I would be like sure but I wouldn't be as like motivated as this guy who has like who has more on the line in a sense so that was a very interesting point but I'm very stubborn so I was like you know what fuck it like I'll just like do everything on my own, you know. Like, uh, you know, I can't I can't wait for these guys. Like, you know, they're too busy. I'm gonna do it on my own. So, I I picked up a Java book because you know they're Android guys. So they, all I knew was Java at the time. So I picked up a book called like uh, Head First to Java. It's it's a good book, but a lot of it just like flew over my head. Uh, I was like. Whoa what is this type what is it like it's just like <laughs> you know java is like kind of a hard language in my opinion to learn first um and i'm really glad that a lot of colleges are switching over to python to be able to like to teach their kids at least that's what my interns told me so i started learning java so i and i was like man i just don't get it like i would never be able to write a single piece of code or like any kind of logic on my own without having to look up a solution on google Right, and I'm like, I remember even asking my friends, like, so guys, like, how often do you, like, Google stuff at work? And then they would say, like, oh, you know, like, every now and then, if you really need some, like, something specific in the framework, or something like that, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and then I, I just kind of like, I was like, oh man, I, I freaking suck, you know. Like I was just like really like miserable during this time that I was trying to learn Java, and um, I, I eventually gave up. And I was like, man, uh, I, I gotta figure something else out, you know. 
and it, it's kind of funny like thinking about that moment in my life but basically i gave up again so this would be like the second time that i gave up how to program first time i was like in community college uh i gave up well, learning c plus plus and then i learned i gave up learning java uh, and i and i at that moment when i gave up java i was like yeah this is probably not for me like i i probably don't i probably don't have what it takes to learn how to program and then something kind of interesting happened um and this is one of the life lessons that i've learned was that uh you gotta really want you gotta really have like a good goal to make to push yourself to get to like kind of that finish line right so one of the issues of java like when i was learning java or c++ was that i wasn't really i wasn't really trying to build anything i was just learning the lang language for the sake of learning so i wasn't really using trying to use my skills actively to build something but that all changed when um Apple announced that they were gonna, like, uh, they were releasing a new language called Swift. And Swift is, you know, it's pretty, like, popular now. But when it first came out, it was like, it was like, whoa, what is this? Like, is this gonna really stick around? Like, no one really knew. Um, but, you know, I'm, I was an Apple fanboy at the time. I had an, like, iOS device and all this kind of stuff. So I was like, oh man, like, I, I wanna make iOS apps. Shut this down. Oh, my sister is about to go into labor. I'm gonna be an uncle. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I guess I should probably celebrate a little bit for my sister's baby boy, I believe. So I got this for my birthday. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's called John Bar. Um, it's a blend of scotch, basically. He just got it for me because it had the name John in it. Um, I had a secret whiskey club for a while where I, uh, basically whoever wanted to come had to bring a whiskey. That's a little hot. Much better. I should probably pick that up. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. All right, I'm back. Wearing my Dev Boot Camp shirt, which is uh, says for make beautiful and meaningful things. It's probably one of my favorite shirts. Except a little, it's a little tight on me now because I'm a dad and I have the dad bod going, which my wife is not super happy about. Anyways, um, where was I? So I basically said to myself, you know what? I'm just gonna get really serious. I'm gonna learn how to code. I'm going to use Swift as my main language and when I'm, my goal, my main goal is to build Flappy, this Flappy Bird game, right, or clone. So I set a challenge to myself to do like the 100 day coding challenge and what that is is you basically do like a meaningful commit um, every day for 100 days and GitHub is pretty nice because you could like, it, you whenever you push code to GitHub it like tracks that like how much commits you did that day and then it's like a different shade of green. Um, I had some like BS commits some days, but like the point was that I was like reminding myself that I needed to continue to do this and I made a promise to myself. And um, it worked, it was crazy. Like uh, I think I learned, I learned so much during that time. I, I think I said this in a video before, but yeah, I learned so much during that time. And afterwards, after all of that, like that whole time period, I finally released um, my first like solo application, and till this day I won't forget like the day that I like bought the developer account. It was like a hundred bucks, which was a lot of money for me. Um, and then I uh, shipped my like like I did. I filled out all the like information, like the meta information, like, like uploaded my logo and. Um, downloaded the app, made my wife download the app, and <laughs> like messaged all my friends to download the app, and yeah, it was crazy. Like watching my friends play it, and uh, I was hanging out with like a group of friends, and one of my friends was like, "Oh, look, my high score is like this," and I was like, "Oh shoot, I can't believe you got that high. Like I thought I made the game to not ever hit a certain score, <laughs> you know." And I'm pretty good at games, so I was like, 
you know, playing it, and he he beat me by like a few hundred like like pipes, right? So I was like really shocked and um, gave me some appreciation of like what it means to be like a developer, right? And what you think is balance and what the reality of things are. So, <laughs> but I basically after that moment, I was like super hooked. Um, even more and I knew that I wanted to do this for like the rest of my life I wanted to build apps for the rest of my life and it, it's weird because I by this time it was I've been I basically was studying on and off for about three years or so now so I studied Java for a little like eight months I gave up I studied I tried it again for another few months I gave up and I picked up Swift and uh, you know I did it that in a hundred days and I, after releasing that app, I continued studying and trying to make different apps. But um, I, I was basically working my ass off outside of my work, like main job, um, on trying to build this like kind of portfolio. Like, cause I, by this time, I knew, like, I knew in my mind that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to get into the industry as like an iOS developer. Um, and I figured, like, uh, since my friends are in the industry, I might be able to leverage that and be able to, um, you know, get referrals and yada yada yada. So, but I was doing a whole bunch of stuff. Like uh, during this time, I was uh, leading two meetups: one in Santa Clara, one in iOS. I mean, sorry, one in Palo Alto, which were both like iOS meetups. So I was going to both of that, and um, I was I started another. I started like a podcast during this time called Alpha to Launch Podcast, which kind of mimicked my game. I don't know why I decided to do that, but um, yeah, basically uh, I, I couldn't think of any good names. I'm really bad with coming up with names for like products and stuff, so I just called it the same thing as my game. Um, but the concept was that um, you go from like Alpha, which is like, uh, you go from Alpha, which is like the beginning, like before beta to launch which is like uh you know to launch a product but like the whole concept was like um like i wanted to interview engineers like other engineers and then ask them about their journey to becoming software engineers and i would like the whole reason why i did it is because i just wanted to talk to as many engineers as i could about the whole process and i'm really glad i did this because i ran into this guy um his name's jackie well actually my sister had a really close friend in college who knew a guy um, who went to uh, hacker rank and hacker rank is one of the most top rated boot camps um still currently um actually i think it was it was bought over by Galvanize. But anyways, um, the point is, um, I met with met up with this guy and I asked him a bunch of questions. Um, I didn't do. I was planning to do an interview him for the podcast, but I basically asked all the questions that I wanted during that time. And this was the guy who taught me about the world of boot camps. Uh, until this point, um, I thought boot camps were a scam. Like I knew about him, but then I thought it was like too good to be true, right? Like. I mean, if you look at boot camps in general, their marketing is a little scummy. You know, it's a little shady. Like, it's almost too good to be true. Like, too good to be true. You know, like, like study for like three months or whatever and land a job making like 105k. Like, you know, all these like, um, like their marketing was like very shady. And then like when you would ask them about like, oh, how many of your grads like graduated? You know, on their website, it might say like 98% people found work, but then they don't like report all the people that like dropped out of the class or some some shady business like that, right? Like that's kind of my, that was my perception of boot camps during that time. Um, but this guy kind of changed my mind. He was like, dude, I went to a boot camp. This is actually pretty true if you especially go to like one of the like known ones. So I was like, oh dude, this is crazy. Um, so I was like, I started doing more research and the more research I did, um, I realized this is like a legitimate thing. So I was like, you know what? I should do boot camps. I should do, I should think about doing a boot camp because um, like I, even at that time, I felt like I knew how to like program, um, but I, I still felt like I was missing a lot of things because I was studying on my own for like, you know, two, three years at, by this time, but I, I still felt like I had holes in my knowledge like I would ask my friend like very very like I wouldn't say dumb questions but like really junior questions um, 
without even realizing that I was asking junior questions. Like I would ask them, hey, what's REST? What's like, like what exactly is like HTTP and like what is REST? You know, like these kind of like basic questions I was asking. And um, I didn't want to feel like that way. I, I wanted to feel like I knew what I was doing and I, I knew I wanted to target like major companies, like major startups or major companies when I uh, was hot, like when I like wanted to get a job as an engineer. Um, so I, I knew that I wanted to have like a good portfolio and all this kind of stuff. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to do a bouquet. Like after talking to this guy, I was like, I'm going to do a bouquet. The only issue was that um, most boot camps are most boot camps are like geared towards web developers. Um, there's many good reasons why they decide to do this, like why boot camps kind of focus on web, um, which I could go into in another detail, like an, another video. But uh, that basically meant that I had to start over in a sense in terms of like learning the language. Um, so. I had my mindset pretty much and I knew that I was going to do this and it was only a matter of like convincing my wife. <laughs> so there I was like newlywed by the way, um, I had to tell my wife that I wanted to quit my job, um, pay a ton of money for some boot camp that didn't really guarantee that I'll have like another job. <laughs> yeah, that was a very fun conversation. Uh, <laughs> But uh, luckily, she was very supportive. Um, she, I think, she saw that uh, I was really passionate about it. I and she saw the work that I was putting into it, and um, I, I think she was okay because she was working at the time, and uh, we had saved a little bit of money, and I had I, I had like the strategy for um, like how I wanted to do the transition. Um, I don't know if I told this story before, like this particular detail, but. When the five five years I was working at my old company, I barely took any PTO, so I had like nine weeks of accrued PTO, um, even after like the wedding, like honeymoon and all that kind of stuff. So um, I like shopped around for a boot camp that was about nine weeks on like full time, and that boot camp happened to be exactly nine weeks full time and nine weeks part time on like online, and um, like the other nine weeks was full time. Uh, at the campus so I was like man dev bootcamp sounds like an ideal choice for me like financially and it was also like eight thousand dollars cheaper than hack reactor or app academy so uh, I applied to dev bootcamp I got in and yeah and that's like basically when I got the acceptance letter because you need to do like a small interview it, it was pretty easy but um, once you pass that interview they'll like say oh like welcome to dev bootcamp send you all these like prep materials that you need to do and then uh after that prep material you're done with the prep material you get placed in a cohort and yeah it was crazy and uh what's the time right now I, see, it's a little this this part's getting a little long so you know i think i'll probably end it here next week when i continue this story I will tell you guys more about like what to expect at boot camps, at least personally what I expected to what the reality was, um, and kind of like how I found my first job. Uh, because like it will take me another like whole like this length of the video to just to get like finish all of that story. But yeah, like it was it was such a crazy journey even getting up to um, the dev bootcamp. Um, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this little story. Um, <laughs> it's, it's fun telling it. Uh, it's fun reminiscing. Be but be for the last thing before I go, I just wanted to show you guys kind of my laptop. Um, I'll show you more in detail what each of these like stickers mean. I, like I already gave this laptop to my wife, but I bought this I bought this laptop basically when I said I was I was gonna get serious about learning how to make iOS apps. And if you guys know about iOS, you need a Mac device to build it. And at the time, I I only had a phone, right? This laptop right here, man, the light's going crazy. I you see all these stickers on it? They all have some sort of like meaning. Some of them are kind of like to fill in space, but most of them have like. I have like uh, they have a special place in my heart because it 
it, it was part of my development journey. So I will share with you guys what each of these stickers mean. And, and I actually have a lot too. So it's, it's like there's some on the back and some of them are gone and I even have... But yeah, this was my first laptop. I learned how to program for three, four year, three or four years or so on just this machine. And this uh, is basically thanks to this guy that I have a job right now as a software engineer. I hope you guys enjoy that. And before I go, uh, I just wanna say this. One thing that I know for a fact, at least it was for me, um, is that anyone can be in this industry. Uh, it's, it, it doesn't take any like kind of special, like, like magic or anything um, to be able to code. It's, it's not as hard as you might imagine, but it just requires a, a lot of dedication and work um, to be able to acquire the knowledge and the necessary skill sets, essentially, to be able to, to execute on a task, right? So think of if you feel like you're like down on your luck and you just can't seem to figure this out, just know that like there's tons of people who feel that way. Uh, and there's tons of people who've get, like tried to learn how to program and gave up and tried again, gave up like me. Um, but one thing that I know for sure is that it was totally worth every like sweat, blood, tears, long nights, all of that was worth it. Um, because now I get to program every single day and it still like blows my mind that I'm so like lucky to be in like kind of this position to be able to do something that I truly love every single day. Um, and I, I hope you guys find that, whether it be programming or anything like anything else. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys, you know, actively look for something like that. So anyways, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Um, I know it's probably like, super long. I'm gonna try to cut it as much as possible. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.